Welcome to our first session in um, our employment law class. I'm so pleased that you are able to join me today. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is kind of get us comfortable in the class. Um, this course is somewhat different than other courses that I teach and somewhat different than probably other online courses that you teach, that, I, that you may be taking, excuse me. One of the big differences is that there isn't a textbook to this class. And so the lectures yeah, function to be both the lectures as well as the textbook. As a result, we're probably going to spend more time than just three hours a week doing the lecture. I mean, if you think about it, in other classes, you maybe do three hours of the lecture, and then you might spend um, one, two, maybe even three hours wrestling with the textbook. And so we won't probably be spending six hours in lectures, but we will in many uh, weeks be spending more than three. Time. Just keep that in mind as you're budgeting yeah, your week's you. time to make sure that you don't uh, find yourself in a, in a pickle not having enough time to spend with the material. Um, I have some suggestions about how to prepare for the lecture. The first thing that I'm going to suggest is that you spend about 30 minutes looking over the study guide for that particular chapter. In most cases, the study guide tracks very, very closely to the PowerPoint slides. And so if you spend about 30 minutes going over those um, PowerPoint slides, you're going to be kind of acclimated to what we're talking about. You'll be exposed to the key terms and you'll see how it's organized. And so that will hopefully make the time that you spend in the lecture a little bit more productive. So when you're looking at things, please notice these three things. Let me go over them again. First of all, how I've organized the material. Um, you'll see that especially in the module organization, which is usually at the very beginning. I kind of, if you were to imagine this as a chapter in a book, these are the chapter headings, or the, the headings within the chapter, the subheadings. And this kind of gives you a sense as to what the big topics are. So look at that organization as you go through and review the materials before the lecture. The second thing is, is look for those terms in red, those key important terms. And my suggestion would be is to go ahead and set up a Quizlet or whatever tool you happen to use to uh, help you uh, memorize those terms. If you're already fairly familiar with the terms before the lecture, the lecture is probably going to make a lot more sense to you. Then the third thing is a little bit more amorphous, and that is the idea of themes. What are the big ideas? And some of those you're going to find in the defined terms, and some of the material you'll find in the, uh, the subjects. But there may be some even larger themes, maybe ideas that you're seeing carried over from previous uh, modules, or ideas that seem to follow, uh, flow throughout the entire module that we're covering this time. So be on the lookout for that material so that you'll be ready to, to kind of dive in and, and get to the minutia. You know, the reality is it's a lot easier to learn minutia when you have the big picture view of things. And that 30 minutes may save you a lot of heartache and a lot of extra time. Um, uh, so that, that can be a good investment. Another thing I'm going to recommend is when you're looking at the uh, lecture, listening to the lecture, be sure to have your study guide handy. You're going to want to annotate it as you're listening to the lecture. You're going to want to add some information. You're going to want to refer to it. As I said, in most cases, the, uh, the uh, study guide will follow very closely, but not identically, with the PowerPoints. And so, that will be a very helpful place for you to put your notes. Even though I'm giving you the PowerPoints, keep in mind that you still need to take a lot of notes. The best material that you can have in a course is the material that you yourself develop. You know how your brain works. You know the connections you can make much better than anybody else on this planet can make. So your notes are the gold standard for you. And so please take careful notes throughout all of the lectures. You know, your notes are best for you in part because you know your brain better than anybody else's, obviously. But they're also the best for you in the, because the process of you taking the notes is tremendously helpful in moving information from short-term memory to long-term memory. It also really helps you kind of grapple with the concepts 
and you can you're kind of forced to stop for a second and say well how should I describe that and you're paraphrasing it and you're, you're, you're putting in your own words and that is a tremendous help it's an active learning step much more useful in learning material than just sitting back and listening to a lecture or reading a book so don't scrimp on the notes that's going to be the way that you really learn the material a good rule of thumb is going to be that you're going to want to use about half of or you're going to want to about double the amount of notes so let's say that the um, that the uh, on, on a particular page for example of the study guide you're going to want to have your own notes be about a page obviously if you do more that's even better um, and sometimes you might do less but try to have that as your goal that you're going to have as much content that you draft as you find in the study guide. Let me offer you some suggestions about how you might want to organize that. Let's look here for a second. One approach will be to have the study guide over here. So you'll print out that page. Obviously it'll be all nicely typed up. And then you'll type a second page here. And this will be the page with your notes. What you don't want to do, of course, is you don't want to re uh, or retype or rewrite out what I've already provided to you in uh, the study guide. But here you can expand upon the material here. And you're probably going to be drawing arrows and saying, hey, you know, maybe I mentioned a case right here. And then I tell a little bit more of the story in the lecture. Well, you can talk about that and put that information right here put it in a box and then you can point it to that particular case. And so by doing this method, you're helping yourself keep all the material together, but you're not having to replicate the information. Um, another way of doing it would be, if you don't wanna tape the page like this, would be to label stuff here and call maybe this section A and this section B and this section C, et cetera, et cetera. And then you would kind of cross-reference it to your other page. But still, that might be a little bit cumbersome, so the idea of taping it may work, make sense for you. Another approach would be to actually type in your notes within the study guide. I'm giving it to you as a Word document, so you do have the ability to add material. And so maybe you could put your particular content, say in blue ink, and then the original content in black ink, and you'd be able to type directly in the same area. That's one approach to think about. Another approach would be to uh, print this out not as portrait style, like this, but as landscape style, like this. If you print it out, then the text is just going to cover a little bit more than half of the page. And you, without having to worry about the tape, you'd have a little bit of area over here that you could uh, use as your free space. It wouldn't be quite as generous. But still, you can always turn it over and write on the back as well. So that would be another alternative that you might want to think about. Another approach would be to use post-its. Um, a lot of people like to use different colors post-its. Maybe you might have one color for cases, uh, one color for definitions, uh, one color for uh, uh, important uh, categories of information that you might you know, have different systems for that, um, and, and you may want to think about how you want to do the post-its. And here it's, it's in a book, but you could see how you could actually put these post-its over area in your outline. And so this could be a, set, a third approach. So you may want to play around with it and see which one makes most sense. What you want to do, though, more than anything else, is make sure you are taking those notes. Because nothing's more frustrating than watching a lecture and realize, oh my gosh, I don't have notes from that lecture. And then you have to go back and kind of watch it again. Hopefully, you're only having to carefully watch each lecture once. You may choose to watch a lecture more than once, but at the second time through, you maybe have a little bit more freedom to multitask while you're listening to the lecture. Um, and so think about how you want to take the notes. And of course, if you try one thing and it doesn't work for you, try something different. Um, after you've, you've watched it the first time again, you may want to listen to it a second time. And there's lots of opportunities here. One thing that you can do is you can speed up the speed. Um, if you want to listen to it, you know, at one and a half times 
uh, while you're driving, for example, or maybe you're making dinner or something along those lines, or you're running or doing some exercise, that can be a good way of listening to the material a second time. That can be a good way to kind of consolidate that information that you're learning. While you're watching the video, be sure to notice the module topics. Again, those are going to be at the very beginning. Let me just show you when I talk about a module talk, a topic that I'm talking about. So here, typically it's going to be the second slide. Sometimes it'll be the third or fourth slide. And these are the topics that we're going to cover. So you can see there are four big topics in this chapter. And then our topic two is broken down into four smaller topics. Um, sometimes there's going to be more than this, sometimes there's going to be less than this. But you'll see here we have the course introduction is our first topic. And then you see the very next slide is course introduction. And so we'll be talking about this first category uh, for a while. And you'll know when we're done talking about course introduction because... you'll see this module topics come up again and you'll see that course introduction has been clicked off. So our next topic is going to be the worker as an employee or other. And I'm, this is my official title, but I have more of a chatty title here, employee or independent contractor. You'll learn quickly that the other category is usually independent contractor. And so we'll be talking about topic two um, until, uh, actually we'll talk about topic 2A, and then topic 2B, and then topic 2C, and then topic 2D, and then we'll go on to our topic 3. And so you'll be able to see when we've completed a topic when you see module topics come up again, and again you'll see that check mark, check mark there. Let's go to the end of yep. this particular one. This is actually a double um, this is a module PowerPoint section that we actually have two PowerPoints for. So you see we only complete the first two topics. You'll need to go to the second PowerPoint to, this, to another lecture, in other words, to cover the last two topics. So this will help you kind of keep your place. And as you're watching here, you can see, okay, all of these topics are going to relate to this topic. And so when you're done, it's a kind of a good idea to say, well, well, what did I learn in the course introduction? What did I learn about the worker as an employee or other? And then what did I learn about a business as an employee or principal and so forth? It provides a framework for you to kind of quiz yourself and make sure you got out of it what you need to. For example, this topic, we have special cases, students, interns, volunteers, or partners as workers. Well, as you're refreshing yourself, if you can't remember what the issues were with students, what the special case was with that, then you know you need to refresh yourself. So you'll either watch that part of the lecture again, or maybe you'll just look at the study guide and that'll be sufficient refreshment. So those are some ways to use the organization tools that I'm providing to help make sense of it. Now, as you're going through it, you'll see that there's lots of these module topics. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about that when I'm doing the lecture, but these are going to be helpful for you to get your bearings as you actually prepare for tests, pre-read the materials, and also participate in the lecture. So let's go back to um, how to listen to the lecture. Um, you want to pay particular attention to the terms in red and to italicized content. Let me show you some of that. You'll see here the term stare decisis. Most of the time when you see a term in red that is in bold, there, it's, a, it's yes. a term that I define there. And so here's the definition. So if I'm doing Quizlet, I already have this set up. I could just, um, and of course this will be in my um, study guide. It won't be in, a, it'll be in a Word document. I can literally just copy this from the Word document and plop it into my Quizlet. And again, here's another uh, definition that I can use. Not 100% of the red bold terms are followed by a definition, but most of the time that they are. Um, and so uh, sometimes the, the term uh, will be defined elsewhere, so you may want to look around to make sure you find it. 
If you can't find a definition that you think is good, you can always reach out to me and I'll be to help. There will also sometimes be content that is italicized in a lecture. I'm not really seeing a lot of content here. This one may not be. Well, sometimes you'll see content that's italicized because it's a, a term from Latin or a different language. That's not what I mean. Sometimes I will italicize content that, uh, because it's especially important. I want to alert you to the fact that I don't no, italicize the content in the study guide. And the reason I don't is that becomes difficult to read. Uh, but I do it in the PowerPoint, both as a reminder to me to emphasize that in the lecture, as also a reminder for you. And so you may want to make a notation uh, in the study name. guide that, hey, Ruber thought this was pretty important. And so that would be a, a kind of a rule of thumb for you to make sure that you are flagging that and paying attention to it as you are watching the lecture. As always, be sure to jot down questions that you have as you watch the material. That process of challenging yourself mentally by saying, what am I not following here? Or what's the question that I have that she's not answering? Um, that's also a very important part of active learning. Think to yourself, um, always have in your mind, what's the question that I would, would be asking in class right now? And jot it down. It may well be that I'll answer it in the next five minutes. But the act of you doing that critical thinking, again, will help you move that information from short-term memory to long-term memory. And of course, if you can't find the answer, if I don't ever tell you that brilliant uh, question that you had, don't ever answer it, uh, send me an email and I'll be glad to answer it at that point. Um, so don't be shy about doing that. But the actual task of writing down the questions is almost more for you to think through than necessarily for you to send to me, although of course you can send it to me. But that goes back to the idea of think to yourself, what am I not getting about this? What piece of the puzzle do, is not follow, flowing for me? That is how you're going to be that critical thinker that's going to remember more and more of this material. One of the things that I hope you'll get out of this course is, instead of spending more time on it, to spend your time as efficiently as possible. If you follow this pattern, you're gonna do great in the course. Um, if you take some, some uh, shortcuts, you may not be as satisfied with your grade, and you may ultimately end up spending more time uh, doing things. And so try this pattern. You may figure out some, some, some tricks that are gonna make it work even better for you. If you do, let me know, because I would be delighted to include additional ideas. Again, I'm really excited to be teaching this course, and I'm really excited that you're taking this course. Thank you so much for your attention, and let's dive into the material. Have a great day.